If you want God to use your life, this is a truth you need to hear. I want to talk to you about the dangers of having unholy mixture in your life while being used by God. The enemy is more deceitful than we are wise sometimes. And it's very key that you learn to stay pure. The power of the Holy Spirit might continue to flow through you. Everyone who has ever begun a relationship with the Lord and eventually developed a desire to be used by Him began in a good place. There's no one who enters the ministry who loves Jesus, who says, eventually I want to be corrupt. Eventually I want to be impure. The scripture tells us, let he who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. In other words, don't be too confident in your own ability. The reality is this, anyone can fall, including you. This is why it's so important that we put safeguards in our life. And it's very important that we understand the dangers of unholy mixture in our lives. Because God will use your life, and God will anoint you, and the Holy Spirit will move through you even in seasons where you're not walking right before Him. I'm going to show you that in the Scripture. But it's so important that you hear what I'm saying because this may save your future. This may save your foundation upon which you will build later. It's the truth of the Word of God. And the truth of the Word of God is what sets us up for success in God's view. Ephesians 2, 1-5 says this, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you've been saved. It's Ephesians 2, 1-5. through 5. Think about everything that God brought you out of. Think about the sin He forgave. Think about the bondages that He broke. Think about the curses that were permanently broken off of your life the very moment you received Christ as your Savior. Think about how He replaced your hate-filled heart with love, your tormented mind with peace, your sorrowful disposition God replaced with joy. He's done a lot for us. And because of that, we want to be used by Him. Because of what He's done for us, we say things like, Lord, use my life. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Lord Jesus, I'll follow you wherever you go. And that's a good way to start. And that's a good place to be. But I want to give you this biblical warning so that your future might be protected. So that you might create boundaries now that will save you later. Because no one is exempt from temptation. And anyone is a candidate to fall. Now, in the book of Ephesians, in part, this book is describing our standing with God, what He's done for us, who we are in Him. But then in Ephesians chapter 4, there's a turn, it seems, from describing what God's done for us, who we are in Him, our position in Christ, to this command, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. That's Ephesians 4, 1 through 4. So, the scripture here is taking the turn and it goes from describing who we are in Christ, our position in Him, what God has delivered us from. And then it tells us, now you walk worthy of this calling. 
Make sure that the way you're living is worthy of what God has called you to. It's our response to what He's done for us. Our holy living is our offering back to Him. We thank Him for liberating us from sin. We thank Him for setting us free from bondages. We thank Him for pulling us out of darkness and placing us into the light. We thank Him by presenting our lives as a living sacrifice. Romans 12.1 And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. We live holy because we're thankful for what God has done. But if we're not careful, then over time, little by little, compromise after compromise, apathetic moment after apathetic moment, we will begin to drift from the Lord if we don't cling to Him. Anyone can fall. Anyone can mess up. Anyone can compromise. Everyone is tempted. And though you may be starting this journey properly, I want to give you this biblical warning so that you won't fall into the traps that so many have fallen into. And maybe now there's compromise in your life. Maybe God is using you now. Maybe you are anointed. Maybe you are in ministry. Maybe your life is surrendered. But there's an unholy mixture. And you've excused it because of your service. You've excused it because God hasn't exposed it. But just because God hasn't yet exposed it doesn't mean that He won't if you don't get it right. But God gives you a grace period and perhaps you're receiving this message now. Perhaps you're hearing what I'm saying and the Holy Spirit is convicting you. And you know that it's God's grace period for you to turn back to Him. Some do have unholy mixture in their lives. And it's true that God will even use the ungodly. Think about the fact that you hear terrible things about mighty men and women of God who were anointed, but behind closed doors, things were hidden. And those things come out and we're shocked. Lord, how did that happen? I'm showing you how. It's because God will use you even when there's unholy mixture in your life. And this is something not a lot of people realize about the Lord. So they take His mercy and they mistake it as approval. They mistake the mercy of God as approval for their lives. I'm going to show you a few biblical examples of this because this needs to be backed by Scripture. I know it's a shocking point to make. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, a very famous example of this. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Yes, God can use those who have compromised in their lives. But again, I say to you, God's mercy should not be mistaken for God's approval. With that perversion in your life, you have mixture. God can use anyone He wants, and God will anoint His Word, and when His Word is preached, power will be demonstrated. But why live with that mixture? Think about Saul. Saul was tormented by a demon. And he was chasing after David out of jealousy, trying to kill David. That demon filled him with rage and hate and jealousy and torment. And so Saul was in pursuit of David, trying to kill God's anointed because of the demonic influence on his life. And he was tormented in the mind. Look at what happened when the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. Because Saul, even though he was filled with the demon, was still able to prophesy. Look at what the Scripture says. 1 Samuel 19, 23 through 24. But on the way to Naoth in Ramah, the Spirit of God came even upon Saul. Now, I want to stop there for a second. Notice that the Scripture doesn't say a demonic spirit. Notice that the Scripture doesn't say an unholy spirit. The Scripture says the Spirit of God came upon Saul. Now, think about that. Saul was demon-possessed. Saul was filled with demonic influence. And the Bible says... 
that the Spirit of God came even upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy all the way to Naoth. Now look at what happens here, though. He tore off his clothes and lay naked on the ground all day and all night, prophesying in the presence of Samuel. The people who were watching exclaimed, What? Is even Saul a prophet? That's 1 Samuel 19, 23, and 24. You know, some of the stranger manifestations that we see even in church services are not a result of the power of the Holy Spirit necessarily. They're a result of what you get when you mix the power of the Holy Spirit with demonic influence. When you see people behaving in strange ways when the Holy Spirit is moving, it could be confusing. You look at it and you say, why are they doing that? Why are they acting like that? It's because sometimes there's mixture. I've seen people when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they start to move on the ground like a snake. Now that's not the Holy Spirit making them move like a snake. What that is, is the mixture of the flesh and the demonic and the moving of the Holy Spirit. The moving of the Holy Spirit stirs up everything and exposes everything. And so you get a lot of weird manifestations. You get a lot of weird teachings. You get a lot of weird doctrines. You get a lot of weird expressions. Why? Because there's mixture, either the flesh or some demonic spirit, but it's unholy mixture. Have you ever been in a service and God's moving, but something's just not quite right? It's unholy mixture. It's what we saw in the life of Saul. Tormented by a devil, filled with jealousy, chasing God's anointed, yet the Spirit came on him and he prophesied. But then he did a very strange thing, tearing his clothes off, lying there naked on the ground, prophesying. Paul the Apostle likewise spoke of people who preached the gospel out of impure motives. Philippians 1.18 says, But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way, so I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. So here, the Scripture is telling us that it's possible to be used by God even when there's unholy mixture. Now, we know that the greater the purity within your life, the greater the power upon your life. We know that to be true. Purity brings more power. That's the truth. But that doesn't mean that someone can't operate in some level of power when there's unholy mixture. God still used those with impure motives. God still moved on Saul to prophesy. In Matthew 7, God still moved them to cast out devils, perform miracles, do mighty works, and to prophesy, yet he never knew them. When you have that impure mixture, you get the strange mixture, which is weird doctrines, power without presence, false teachings. You get mental torment, the guilt from what you're doing, the guilt from living a life of hypocrisy while presenting another facade. You also get a destructive future, here and in eternity. Like electricity without a wire, God's power is destructive if it's not grounded in Christ. He's giving you grace. He's giving you grace. Get it right. Get it right. Humble yourself before God. If you humble yourself before Him, He'll raise you up. If you keep trying to raise yourself, He's going to humble you. Humble yourself before God. Repent. Turn the other way. Get this right. Stop with the unholy mixture. Go after the real power. Yes, there's a real measure of power that can come upon hypocrites. We know that. But there's an even greater measure of power for those who walk in purity. For if God will anoint a hypocrite, how much more will he anoint a vessel that is yielded in purity to him? Don't settle for the lesser measure of power. Don't be comfortable in God's mercy and mistake it for God's acceptance. The greater the purity, the greater the miracles and ministry. Purity matters. The greater the purity within your life, the greater the power upon your life. So Holy Spirit, help us. Help us please to avoid unholy mixture. Lord, let us kill all the little sins. Holy Spirit, kill all the little sins. Protect us. Protect our futures. And help us continue to walk closely, closely, closely with you. I thank you, Lord, that you're granting repentance. I thank you, Lord, that you grant mercy. 
But Lord, may we walk worthy of the calling. Help us do it, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. And now, here is a question for conversation. What are some boundaries you can set and some commitments you can make that will help to make sure that you keep the anointing on your life pure? Everyone needs to set boundaries. Everyone needs to make commitments. So what are some of these boundaries you can set, some of these commitments you can make to keep the anointing in your life pure? Let me know in the comment section right now. Write your response. I want to see how God is speaking to you. And now, here are the comments from another video titled, I am the God that healeth thee, worship cover by Stephen Moctezuma. So these comments are coming from an entirely different video, which I'll read right now. But if you haven't checked out the worship ministry of Stephen Moctezuma on our channel, make sure you do that. And by the way, make sure you're subscribed. Click the notification bell. That really is important so that you enable notifications when we release new content. And make sure that you're following us wherever you're watching us. So here are the comments from Steve's cover of I Am the God That Healeth Thee. Emily Laramore writes, Very anointed song. Thank you for your ministry, Stephen. It's such a blessing. Karan Jatwani writes, Thank you for this beautiful and anointed song, Stephen. God bless you abundantly. Q Ghana says, Stephen Moctezuma has a way to bring out the beauty in a song. A very soft, calm, and beautiful voice. I am blessed every time. Confident through Christ writes, I love his soft tone, such a beautiful voice. What a gift God has given him. And the final comment I will read comes from 730 Evie who writes, I used to listen to this song when my husband was in the hospital. It would bring tears to my eyes. Stephen is such a blessing. I want to read a scripture to you. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. In other words, if it's in your power to do something good, if it's in your power to help a cause, if it's in your power to make a difference, do it. Do it for those who deserve it. And I can't think of anyone more deserving than Jesus. And you know, when you give to ministries like this one, you're not really giving to a ministry. You're giving through a ministry, but you're giving to Jesus. He has never held back from you. Don't hold back from Him. Be a part of what He's doing in the earth. Help this ministry. Continue to preach to lost souls. Continue to minister to those who need healing in their body. Continue to demonstrate God's power around the world. Give to this ministry. Support it financially. Help it grow because it belongs to Jesus and we do this for Him. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly supporter of this ministry, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. And be sure to check out all of the partnership benefits that are current on our website. Help us continue to spread the gospel around the world. If this ministry has impacted you in any way, if any part of you believes in what we're doing, if you want to help us continue to win souls, and continue to preach the gospel, and continue to expand this ministry to impact the generation, then get behind us today. Again, one-time gifts, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Become a monthly partner by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.